Good morning. Good to see you all again. I am Pastor Goodine, um, covering today. Pastor Gold will be back next week. That's what I put it that um, So welcome all of you that are here online and all of those kind of things. We're using Divine Setting 4 for the order of service, and I've been told that we're supposed to fill out attendance because Pastor Bolt's not here. And we all know that you have a signed seat. <laughs> it just kind of works that way. You know, you know, they come to sit in the same place. It's just, I don't know. But that's the excitement. Um, so I invite you to join us with uh, opening him number 650. <laughs> Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. 
If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But he bears forgiveness, therefore in your fears. Since we are gathered here to hear God's word, call upon him for prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, the sinner. We will have a period of silence as we reflect on our nature in light of God's word and the Ten Commandments. Let us call unto the Lord. Almighty oh God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and forgive us the everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. <clears throat> Because your abiding presence always goes with us, keep us aware of your daily mercies, that we may live secure and content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll now speak from the verse of the month from Romans chapter 6. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from the life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. Don't 
The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 20. O oh Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you are strong, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry, I cry out. I shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become to me a reproach, a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, that will be in my heart as a burning fire <clears throat> shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him, said all my close friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps, we will, perhaps he will be deceived, then we can overcome him and take our, our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dreaded warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be glad, they will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. For the Lord of hosts has tested the righteous, who sees the heart and minds. Let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read responsibly Psalm 91. The one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the living. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 6. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, to make you obey their passion. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought forth from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will not have, will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under the grace? By no means. Do, not, do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slave, you are slave to the one whom you obey, either of sin which leads to death, or obedience which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you who who were once slave to sin has become obedience 
from the heart of from the heart to the standards of teaching to which you were committed, having been set free from sin, have become slave of righteousness. I am saying I am saying these in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you were a slave of sin, you were free in regards to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you now are ashamed? To the end, to those to the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slave of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life and Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before people, I will also acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before people, I will also deny before my Father, who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. We confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please be seated. 
if I were to tell you that today is the time when people are set against people in their own families, you wouldn't be surprised. Some think it's a time, I know families, where if you have a different viewpoint than someone else in the family, it is akin to betrayal. The people are almost at one another's strokes if one difference on who ought to be our leader. And we see the leaders screaming at one another, certainly not listening to one another. It seems to me sometimes because it's all important to win beyond any other reason. I was foolishly under the impression it could not get a whole lot worse. When I read this past week that one of our elected leaders was trotting out the idea that the submarine that imploded trying to go visit the Titanic this past week, the cause was a massive failure, ship, failure of leadership at the highest level. Okay. Kind of reminded me uh, of an observation. I think it might have been Will Rogers, the 1920s or 30s. He, he said this: Democrats promise there will be a chicken in every pot, a good five-cent cigar, clean neighborhoods, and your grass will grow clean, green on every lawn if you elect us. And the Republicans said. Government cannot do all these things. They're lying, so elect us. And they did elect the Republicans who went on to prove that the government indeed could not do those things. They were right. So in any case, I just the way it's been, the, the heat the last weeks or two, and the lack of the rain, I've had trouble getting green grass to grow at my house. So. But the gospel is not about government. It's about the disciples of Christ who are given instruction by Jesus to go to the house of Israel, not to the Gentiles, not to the Samaritans. Stick with our own, or go to our own people. Oh, and by the way, you're going to your own people, but there are going to be troubles, difficulties, struggles. People will betray one another, and you will even face death because of the message you bear. And some of you will face hatred at the deepest level. One of the, the challenges in reading Holy Writ is that sometimes folks think, well, it's nice Jesus had that to say to the 12 disciples way back when, but it's meant for God's people of all times, not just those people that were there 2,000 years ago. I'll give you an example. It was two, around 225 CE that a boy was born in a, what's now Italy. He grew up, and at the tender age of 22, he was ordained a deacon. Later, this very young man was raised to the level of archdeacon by the then pope, and he was the archdeacon of Rome. What that meant, that he was in charge of the treasury and the riches of the church. So he oversaw the distribution of alms to the indigent. And in 258, Emperor Valerian declared, bishops, priests, and deacons should all be executed immediately when they are caught. There were issues. Well, that pope that ordained him was captured and immediately beheaded. After this, the prefect of Rome told this archbishop by the name of Lawrence 
turn over the treasury of the church, the treasures of the church to me. And Lawrence asked for three days to gather the riches and present them to him. And then he went about with great haste to give away all of the money, everything that he could get his hands on and give it to the poor. Well, on the third day, he was called back. And the prefect said, turn over the treasures of the church to me. Well, he then presented to the prefect the poor, the indigent, the crippled, and the blind. And he said, here are the treasures of the church. You see, the church is truly rich, far richer than your emperor. <clears throat> you might imagine this wasn't received well. The story is that he was so mad, he put Lawrence, who had a rather odd sense of humor, on a massive gridiron over burning coals, uncomfortable at best. After a time of being like this, Lawrence is said to have said, I'm done on this side, you can turn me over. <laughs> he died shortly after that, so. You know, when you carry a message of Jesus to take care of the poor, the lame, those that are most in need, you may not be treated all that well. So that message of betrayal and death was extant some 200 years after Jesus. And the gospel is still written for us, as Jesus says here. A disciple is not above his teacher. See how I'm treated? What do you expect? Then comes the line, do not fear, which I find about as helpful as telling somebody, don't be anxious. Yeah, OK. Do not fear, which is really more about, what do you think about God compared to what do you think about what can happen in this world. What I find challenging in this text is the message is to those of us of the Christian church, the new Israel. What is it that might cause great dissension among us who are followers of Jesus? There are multiple um, of what I heard one preacher call us tribes of Christians out there. And it may be easy, and I'm, I've been schooled in how to do this, point out the errors of all of the different tribes, because our tribe has got it right. Well, what do they do? What do they fail to do? What do they teach? What do they fail to teach? How do they differ? Well, it seems to me an awful lot like the political discourse in our country, which about, is about the only thing we can agree on, and that is that it, we're not doing all that well working together. So rather than thinking about putting a magnifying glass on the others, I believe we ought to consider a mirror as the proper inst instrument to use and to consider what we do or fail to do, what we teach or fail to teach, where our confession of faith differs from what we ought to be doing and we know we ought to be doing. First, it takes some time to really consider what ought to guide us. Often we hear in our circles, it is the word of God. Of course, but it can be problematic. For the word of God, 
It's not simplistic and it has to be interpreted. You may recall from those catechism days or other days that uh, and the weirdness of what Lutherans can do sometimes is we have the alones, sola gratia, sorta fides, sorta scriptura, scripture alone, grace alone, faith alone, but there's not alone in any of them. There's three alones. It's always fun. Sola gratia gives me a clue. When we look at what we are doing or what we are not doing, we ought to consider a norm of the love of God. For it's, if it's not about love, it's not about God. Let me repeat that. If it's not about love, it's not about God. Jesus gives to those disciples he's sending out the image of a sparrow, which was a, at that point in time a pretty worthless little bird. Two sparrows, a penny. And then he tells them, the Father knows when even one of these falls to the ground, you are of more value than many sparrows. The idea of being of value to God has meant a great deal to folks through the years. You may recall coming from other traditions, a song about sparrows. It mentions how Jesus is my portion, the one who is my brother, the one who came to humanity to give life, who was and is about love for us, God's love toward us, calling us to be carrying God's love towards others. He is a constant friend. There are times in life when each one of us struggles, might feel discouraged, may feel alone, might fear. But know this, the writer pens. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. And I know that his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. And he calls us to be vulnerable, to risk, and to love one another. And he watches over us because we are of more value than many spirits. There is a time to focus and to understand the correct doctrine. But the time is always right to treat one another in love. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be glory and dominion in the church forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now as we continue with the hymn of the day, number 659, Lord of life and God of our salvation. <clears throat>
pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the gift of divine peace and pardon which comes through God's means of grace, with all our hearts, with all our minds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, the faithful pastors, missionary church workers, proclaim the gospel for the calling of all the faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. This nation, for our cities and communities. For our elected and appointed officials, for those who serve in the military, including Katie, Grant, Mark, Kristen, and Jacob, for their common welfare of us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. The season of the weather and the fruitfulness of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those in need, including the Anders family, Doug, Kevin, Jordan, Candy, Joel, Emily, Isaiah, Brad, the family of John, Philip, Sharon, the people of the Ukraine, for all those impacted by disasters of nature, for couples who long for a child, and for those expecting, for the hungry, the homeless, the widow, the orphan, for all those in prison. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the homebound, the sick, and the dying, for all of those who care for them, including Kathy, Linda, Sharon, Chris, Kurt, Melissa, Mike, Billy, Deb, Dan, Fred, Irene, Ron, Shane, Al, Larry, Donna, Renee, Betty, Martha, Jerome, Cindy, Madison, Joshua, Barbara, Shane, Dylan, Al, Dana, Tyson, Charlie, Marie, Midge, Olivia, Bonnie, Ruth, Reverend Ross, Peggy, Jojo, Neil, Denise, Ernie, Doris, Reverend Taglaw, Gage, Cricket, Jean, Lottie, and Gail. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who rejoice over God's good and perfect gifts, especially for God's gift of a successful surgery for Hazel, for healing and recovery granted to Edwin and Mbadu, for another year of life for Rose, Kyle, Alan, Glenn, and Christian who celebrate their birthdays this week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Finally, for these and all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns through all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemn the sin of Adam and Eve, you ate the forbidden fruit, you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. You made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessing of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not to Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, when he had given thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you, this new for the remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after they had supped, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament, shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink from it for the remembrance of you. the peace of the Lord be with you all.
God the Father, fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his confidence upon you and give you peace. Amen.
once, twice. Go in peace, serve the Lord.